So now, in this uh, video, we got a 555 timer here that is wired so that uh, you can change the output based on touch. So you need a low enough uh, voltage at pin 2, the trigger pin right there, in order to set the output high. We have a pull-up resistor, 1 million ohm uh, resistor. You need kind of a high value resistor because my body cannot overpower it very easily. And uh, there you can see when I touch the uh, metal part that goes to the uh, trigger pin right there, my body was able to get the voltage to lower because it's going up or down uh, rapidly, um, about 60 times a second. It's able to get below one third supply voltage, you know, briefly, but it's enough to set the output high. That's all pin two is waiting for is a low enough voltage, less than half of, or less than a third, I mean, of the supply voltage, five volts in this case. And um, once it uh, reaches that though, then it sets the output high, connects to the power supply as good as it can, although you lose a little bit of voltage at the output. And um, it will stay there. It doesn't set the output back low. To set the output back low, um, we could reset pin four to ground, but instead we got pin six. So pin six has to go to uh, two thirds or higher supply voltage right there. It has a pull down uh, resistor right there. So it's keeping zero volts at uh, pin six, that pull down resistor. Again, it's a million ohms um, because uh, my body's not a very strong signal at all. So this needs to be an even weaker signal. But yeah, I touch the uh, metal part there and for a brief period of time, it's every 60 seconds, the voltage is going up or down thanks to magnetic fields hitting my body from the alternating current in the house. Um, but in any case, uh, we get above two thirds supply voltage for any period of time, you know, um, the 555 timer is a lot quicker than uh, what the signals are changing in my body. Um, but yeah, it gets high enough, then it sets the output low, makes a connection to ground, not a perfect connection, but uh, pretty good right there. Blue LED lights up. So you can see we got a positive supply to the blue LED, so you know the output is connected to ground fairly well. Blue LED is lit up. And then uh, touch uh, the trigger pin right there to give a low enough uh, voltage briefly to set the output high. And uh, again, it's a good idea to measure with the multimeter if you never have before to see the voltage of the output. Um, but it's probably like three and a half volts or so, red LED. So we got less voltage to work with at the high output right there. It just doesn't connect to the positive supply as well as ground, thanks to the transistors uh, going in them, ground when it's low. And um, so got a lower value resistor for the red LED to let more current flow. Also, red LEDs just naturally aren't as bright as blue LEDs. If you put the same current through the two of them, the blue LED is gonna be brighter right there. So we got a 1000 ohm uh, resistor for that. And I bumped the power supply, so I think that changed the output. I could be wrong though. Um, but in any case, um, that's the main takeaway. And uh, this, uh, I made, I printed this diagram a long time ago, but every once in a while, my uh, printer doesn't really want to do black, so I got to do some stuff to take care of that. Um, so it's uh, not as uh, black there, a little harder to see, so I'll zoom in a little more. So yeah, there's the uh, pin names. I used the uh, name of uh, the uh, trigger pin. I think I said threshold. That's uh, pin six right there. Discharge, we're not discharging anything in this circuit. That connects the ground when the output's low. Positive supply is VCC. Negative supply is ground. That's how you power it right there. Reset pin, as I said before, it's waiting for a low input. As long as it has a low input, the output's gonna be low no matter what you do. It's the most powerful input uh, right there. And of course, we got the output. Either connects to ground, pretty good, low output, or positive supply, not as good. Um, but you can get quite a bit of power uh, in either direction going through them, uh, much more than what the uh, LEDs need. Pretty sure it's a maximum of syncing or sourcing 200 milliamps of current. I usually try to stay halfway below the maximums. But yeah, this could easily switch 100 uh, milliamps of current in either uh, direction. So again, main takeaway is all I have to do is touch the resistor right there. And um, it uh, may kind of lose its connection from bouncing or whatever, but it's the uh, signal from my body that is ultimately being passed along to the input, even though it's very weak. That's the main takeaway. The really sensitive inputs there. So um, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.